I'm Jareth Kopis. This is Notes from Underground. We're going to be continuing our conversation about Belarus with what I call the Coup Council. We left our last episode speaking about Galos, or voice organization, that was created essentially as a subsidiary of the Coordination Council Belarus. This NGO was created on August 14th of 2020 by Svetlana Tikhanovskaya. In a video released by Tikhanovskaya, she claims to have won the election with 70% of the vote and begged world leaders to recognize her as the president of Belarus and announced the formation of this Coordination Council. Uh, I'm not going to run for new elections. I'm just like a transition uh, president. Just, uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to, and uh, I am, and my team are going to uh, organize new uh, or fair and transparent elections where I'm not going to be involved. The goal of this council was to remove Lukashenko and hold new elections as soon as it was feasible. So, Tikhanovskaya, since she was the backup choice for the West president, wasn't even going to maintain her role as a foreign chosen president. She was only going to be an interim placeholder until a new president was chosen. This council was to be the center of the opposition and was staffed by hundreds of various people. Lukashenko quickly took notice of it and claimed that it was a criminal organization and took steps to counter it, invoking Article 361 of the Belarusian Criminal Code on the ground of attempting to seize power and harming national security. In its initial form, it was controlled by several leaders, of whom we will now take a closer look. Olga Kovalkova is a personal aide to Svetlana, co-chair of the Belarusian Christian Democracy Party and presidential hopeful herself. She was no stranger to being an opposition figure and was a key advisor for Tikhanovskaya. Late in August, she was arrested for her role in the council. After her release, she claimed she was abducted by masked men driven to the border of Poland and kicked out of the country. She claims she was threatened with life in prison, and worse, if she didn't stay out. Pavel Latushka is another Belarusian politician who had filled multiple roles, most notably as the consul of the Consulate General of the Republic of Belarus in Poland, and eventually gaining the title of ambassador to Poland, France, Spain, Monaco, and Portugal. In 2019, he was removed from all of these offices and took on the role of director of a local theater, which he was fired from less than a year later. He then joined the coup council and after fearing his arrest, fled to Poland. His roles in the government left him one of the most well connected to the West of all the members in the coup council and his arrest would have put a severe damper on the coup's inner workings. Pavel has openly called for civil disobedience in Belarus and is pushing for an escalation in tensions. Lilia Vlasova is a prestigious Belarusian lawyer who created the first private law firm in Belarus after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. By 2011, she had gained a reputation as a mediator with her Center of Mediation and Negotiation group. This gained her the title as mediation expert in the International Development Law Organization and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. She was one of the first to be arrested by Belarusian police on August 31st for violating Article 361 of the Belarusian Criminal Code. Sergei Dilevsky is a steel worker and strike organizer. He was personally sought out by the coup council and didn't go to it himself. His voice of opposition came from a grassroots that held actual grievances. This was needed to make the council seem as if it were more than just a gathering of highly paid dissidents looking to overthrow the power structure for themselves. His role was to be the face of the masculine side of the on-the-ground protesters, who would be willing to fight physically to defend the feminine side of the on-the-ground protesters, whom are being used by these elites seeking regime change as shields. This being a new development, to the standard color revolution model, and the one that I find most despicable thus far. Maria Kolesnikova is a musician and opposition figure in Belarus. She taught the flute at a private school in Minsk before moving to Germany to attend the State University of Music and Performing Arts in Stuttgart. Politically, she had only begun in 2019 when she joined Viktor Babarika's presidential campaign as a campaign manager. In August, she joined the coup council and set to work to remove Lukashenko. 
By the beginning of September, it appeared as if she was trying to distance herself from the coup council by creating her own party that would work independently called Razam, or Together. Days after this announcement, she was supposedly abducted along with other members of the coup council, driven to the Ukrainian border, and forced to leave the country. Official reports deny these claims and state that she and her two associates had been attempting to leave the country, and she was detained after tearing up her passport. Her arrest received more attention than any of the others, and even garnered a press statement from Michael Pompeo, and her story was spread across Western media as a kidnapping, and is now the center of many Western human rights organizations' attacks on Belarus. Maxim Znak is a politician and lawyer from Belarus who represented the aforementioned Viktor Babarika. He was one of the last leaders of the coup council to be arrested when he was arrested in his office early in September. The only remaining member of the Presidium is Ukrainian Svetlana Alexeyevich. She moved at a young age with her family to Belarus where she worked as a newspaper reporter. She was a critic of the Soviet Union and was accused of defamation and desecration of soldiers' honor for some of her work. Because of this, she left the country for some time before returning to continue her role as an opposition figure. She has claimed that men in black masks had attempted to kidnap her, but then just disappeared. Because of this, diplomats from multiple countries are now interfering in the pursuit of justice in Belarus by keeping what they call a round-the-clock guard of her home. The Coup Council is the mother NGO that spawned the army of civil society organizations that are now able to disperse the foreign funds provided to it into multiple outlets. These other outlets then carry out the groundwork for the color revolution through protest organization and all the required equipment involved, media presence ranging from the creation of entire news outlets such as was done heavily in Ukraine with entire news channels created overnight such as Espresso TV, payment of organizers and participants, such as what is happening in Belarus with what is called the Honest People's Organization, who provides protesters with direct payments if they're able to prove they lost their jobs because of their stance against Lukashenko. These groups, although seemingly independent civil society groups, are nothing more than a mouthpiece of the mother NGO and its Western leadership. They act as an amplifier for the narrative, giving the illusion of a diverse movement with multiple leaders and members. This again can be shown by the Honest People's Group, who not only pays protesters, but is also quoted in numerous Western media articles as an elections observer and helped to push the idea that Tikhonovskaya was the actual winner. So the mother NGO of the Coordination Council, the Coup Council, spawned Galos, which spawned Honest People, which is monetarily supported by pre-existing opposition groups in Belarus such as Zuber, who had in the 90s attempted to overthrow the Belarusian government with help from the U.S. Ambassador Michael Kozak, who had been integral in the coups in Serbia, Georgia, and multiple operations in South America. The network is intricate and covers the entire country. But despite what like senior SEPA member Edward Lucas told me when I was trying to investigate their role in the Ukrainian coup, he stated, if you want to write about think tank financing in general, good luck, touting the goal of these groups to hide support provided for the coups around the world. What can be seen with even further clarity is that these protests in Belarus, which are by no means not warranted, have a nefarious side one guided by those who seek to turn countries into vassal states who allow their natural resources, including their people, to be subjugated and stripped bare, as well as turning the country into a foreign base of operations in which to launch both covert and open provocations against Russia. Will you continue to be fooled, or will you now start analyzing every situation through the lens of color revolution? In order to bring war to the war makers, we must master these optics and counter them together before death and destruction rule the day.